Welcome back to the one another series that focuses on relationship goals. Last session, we talked about the relationship of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And collectively, together as one another, we, we bear this image of God. Today, we will be looking at the first category of the one another commands and instructions found in the New Testament, and that category is love. Let us dive into session two, love for one another. I'll pick up two of the one another verses uh, on love. Firstly, I found that the Bible explicitly mentioned that loving one another is a commandment. Jesus mentioned it uh, to his disciples when they had their last meal before Jesus was taken away to be crucified. John 13 verse 34 A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. Jesus reminded his disciples to love one another just as he had loved them unto death on the cross. Loving one another is a commandment. Secondly, we see that holiness precedes our love for one another. Peter emphasized on holy living. He exhorted Christians to love with purity, sincerity, and without hypocrisy. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22 Now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. There is no true love with an unclean heart. Christian love must be from the heart, true, sincere, and unfeigned. And so we see that love for one another is imperative in our Christian living as exhorted by Peter as well as by Jesus himself. Let us see how this love for one another looks like in the following story. The book of Ruth beautifully exemplifies the essence of love. It talks about the relationship between Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz. As you listen to the story, try to identify what it tells about love. What are some of the traits in love? Example, love protects, love is kind, and such. First, let's look at the love that is found in Naomi. The story begins with Naomi's husband to, uh, taking her together with her two sons to Moab to escape a severe famine. He died and later his sons also died, leaving Naomi with her two Moabite daughters-in-law. Her sons married local women in Moab. When Naomi got to know that the drought ceased, she decided to go back to Bethlehem, Judah. And on the way, Naomi stopped and she asked her daughters-in-law to go back to their mother's home. That would mean a long, lonely journey for her, not just on the road to Bethlehem, but her lifelong journey, because she is now empty with nothing left uh, with her, with, without a family and also without wealth. In her mind, she was thinking of her daughter's-in-law's welfare. If they were to follow her back, that would mean that they will have very little chance of starting a new life because of uh, them being foreigners, foreign women, as well as widows. So Naomi insisted that they went back to their families so that they might have a chance or an opportunity to start a new life again. During those days, 3,000 years ago, marriage was the only stability and security for a woman. Naomi couldn't bear to see her daughters-in-law joining her in her bitter state of predicament. She didn't want them to suffer along together with her. And as the story unfolds, we also see the love that is found in Ruth. What happened next was emotional. They hugged each other, they cried, they wept loudly just at the thought of being separated with one another. And with a heavy heart, 
one of the daughters-in-law uh, consented, listened to Naomi, took her advice and kissed her goodbye. But Ruth clung on to Naomi. She refused to leave her. She chose not to become a wife again, but to remain being a daughter-in-law to Naomi. How Ruth replied Naomi was noteworthy. Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 to 17 Don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. Naomi, looking at Ruth's relentless determination, she consented. And the two widows sojourned back to Bethlehem in each other's company. Subsequently, we see the love that was found in Boaz. Who was Boaz? As the story continues. Destitute. The two women arrived in Bethlehem, and so Ruth volunteered to collect grains uh, of barley left by the harvesters. There is this providence in the law of Moses that requires farmers to leave behind grains for the impoverished and the needy. Ruth came to a field which belongs to uh, Boaz, and so happened Boaz is a relative to Naomi. Boaz took notice of Ruth either because uh, she stood out being a foreigner or she was very hardworking in that field. Ruth's loyalty towards her mother-in-law uh, further caught Boaz's admiration for her and uh, she found favour in him. He ensured for her safety and that surplus grains will be left behind for her to pick up. When Naomi saw this, her art of matchmaking nudged Boaz to take on Ruth as his wife, but there was a clause. Because Boaz was their kinsman redeemer, their marriage would mean that he had to purchase back their land. And not only that, if Ruth were to give birth, Boaz's estate would be apportioned to her children. There is this law back then, the law of leverage marriage, which required the nearest relative of a deceased man to marry his widow and the children born to this new couple carried the name of the name of and the inheritance of the first husband. Boaz willingly did that for the family and Ruth willingly married a man much older than herself in Boaz to continue her late husband's family bloodline. And so the couple got married and Ruth conceived and she gave birth to a son. What does this story show us about love? Many traits can be found in this story. See if you can identify them. Let me share with you three of the traits to start you off with. One for each of the characters. Firstly, Naomi's love that was selfless. Even though Naomi is going to be alone, she still urged her daughters-in-law to go back to their families so that they may remarry and have a life that is better. She wanted for their good instead of thinking for her own welfare. We learn from Naomi that uh, love is selfless. Secondly, Ruth's love that was faithful. Ruth's courageous loyalty to her mother-in-law. She did not leave Naomi even with that impending life of being an alien living in a foreign land and also abandoning her own chance to be remarried and to start a new life. She would rather stay unmarried and serve her mother-in-law till death. We learn from Ruth that love is faithful and requires commitment. Thirdly, Boaz's love was benevolent. Boaz came forth as a gentleman of honour in taking up his role as kinsman redeemer for the family. His kindness shielded the widows as he took Ruth as his wife. And that was despite his own wealth to be apportioned to the family of Ruth's first husband, 
Boaz shows us that love is generous and seeks to protect. And so Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz exemplify love for one another. But the story did not just end there. Although the book is named after Ruth, it is actually the story of Naomi. And the story tells about God's love for Naomi. She went out full and was emptied with nothing. But God's faithfulness towards her restored her and blessed her with an eternal lineage. Ruth chapter 4 verse 16 Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. And from David's lineage comes our Savior Jesus. Naomi represents all of us who were once impoverished, but yet because of God's surpassing love for us, we now can be fully redeemed and restored through our Lord Jesus Christ. Allow me to conclude with this scripture verse. 1 John chapter 4, verse 12 No one has seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. So, how about us? What is our story of love? Shall we pray? Father, we just want to thank you for your unfeigned love for us. We ask that Holy Spirit, you will teach us to love one another in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We see you in our next session on unity. Take care. God bless.